The time has come. The Stanley Cup Finals are finally here. Well, we're going to see a, t- a Canadian team in the finals for the first time since 2021. So not too long ago, uh, that team were the Montreal Canadiens. Now the Edmonton Oilers, first time since 2006, find their way back in the Stanley Cup Finals versus the Florida Panthers, who are hoping to take it home this time, where last year they lost to the Vegas Golden Knights. Um, in the 2023 Stanley Cup Finals. This year, the 2024 Stanley Cup Finals between the Edmonton Oilers and the Florida Panthers. So the two best players in the league finally get their shot at glory. Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl, will they finally get that trophy that they obviously deserve because of how fantastic they've been and how dominant they've been throughout the regular season and in the playoffs these last couple of years? But also the Florida Panthers, they have something to work hard for, and that is to, uh, you know, correct the wrongs from last year and bring the the cup back to Florida. What I mean by that is that you know Tampa Bay won the Stanley Cup a couple years back, um, and they're going to be bringing it back to the state of Florida. They have yet to win a Stanley Cup, so this would be their first time winning if they do win. And for the Edmonton Oilers, it would be the first time since 1990 where Mark Messier was the captain of the Edmonton Oilers, where uh, Wayne Gretzky was playing with the LA Kings during that time. So, uh, yeah, this is going to be the first time that the Edmonton Oilers have the two best players in the league since the Mark Messier and Wayne Gretzky uh, days in a Stanley Cup final. So this is going to be very exciting. We have a lot to discuss in terms of our analysis. But, uh, yeah, guys, what are your thoughts essentially in terms of how like what Edmonton did versus Dallas and you know I think that caught a lot of people by surprise because Dallas I think were highly favored to win that series and the Florida Panthers they were the favorites to win the series versus the New York Rangers but both uh, series end in six games so what were your like your takeaways essentially from both uh, matchups heading to the Stanley Cup finals well I think Talking about Florida, I think they they kind of just replicated what they did last year. I mean, if you look at the Rangers, um, especially in in Game Six too, it it just felt like they were it just felt like they weren't gonna find a way to win that game. Like even when Florida, you know, takes that two nothing lead and then the Rangers come back and score one, like you still don't have the feeling that the Rangers are going to come back and win this game. And it, it, it felt, it always felt like with Florida that it just felt like they were going to find a way to win this series one way or another. They were playing better than the Rangers. I don't necessarily think the Rangers played all that great in the series. And I think that that costed them at the end of the day, but Florida just kind of continued to play their game. They continued to push. They continued to be aggressive. They continued to get, you know, depth scoring and, and scoring from, from a committee. And, you know, they, they played very good defensively and Bobrovsky played some good hockey as well. And I think at the end of the day, that's that's what it took for Florida to get through the Rangers. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, a big a big player that made a whole difference for, for Florida was Alex Barkov. I mean, he was able to shut down, you know, Artemi Panarin's line for most of the, most of the playoffs, uh, most of the series. And he's done that with, you know, the Boston Bruins as well in, in round number one, um, you know, so that's at, at, round number two, sorry. And he did it with the Tampa Bay lightnings in round number one. So uh, at some point, like, you know, you got to look at that as well and, and praise the Florida Panthers for just, you know, playing good hockey. And I think at the end of the day, like that's really all it, it comes down to is, is them playing good hockey. And just in terms of Edmonton, I mean, this is a team that I think you kind of started seeing it after i think game four and game five like edmonton goes down i believe if i'm not mistaken they go down two nothing in the in the game and they came back and won five two that game i think determined the series because to to go into a game where you're down two nothing and like i said at that point it looked more like okay dallas you know dallas has got this dallas has got this you know the oilers had blown a two nothing lead in a game in the previous game before that. So it just felt like Dallas had their number and then they go and they score five unanswered. And it felt like ever since then, and ever since that moment, it just felt like this was Edmonton series to lose. Like they had Dallas right where they wanted them. And I just don't think Dallas was able to match Edmonton's energy at the end of the day. The other thing about the Oilers is they had production from their top players from the beginning. 
right? Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl, Evan Bouchard, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, and Zach Hyman are big factors as to where the Oilers are today, right? Like yeah. you know, McDavid scoring the goal in, in game six to make it one nothing. Like at the end of the day, that's 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 what you want, right? In game six in a big moment in a series potentially deciding game, you want your star player to be your star player, and he was, right? And as much as people can turn around and criticize Stuart Skinner, and I'm one of them, you know, who criticized him throughout the season and in the playoffs, the last three games, he's been fantastic. He shut and, the door. Right. And I think that at some point, you have to look at this and give credit where credit is due. Stuart Skinner looks like he's playing good hockey at the right moment. And if he can continue to stay hot, I mean, this can be a very entertaining series. I, I, think, I think at this point, this is probably the best chance the Oilers have at winning a cup. This is the best chance of McDavid to win a cup. And it just felt like even last game, game six, it felt like the Oilers were on a mission. Even when they had 10 shots and they were getting out shot, it just felt like no matter what Dallas was putting at them, it just wasn't going to happen. That's And that's what, that's what I feel like it's been with the Oilers for a while now, where it's like it just feels like no matter what teams throw at them, they're able to find a way to answer back. And that's what I think ultimately led them to where they are today. At that, and I think they've had more depth than than usual. And their big guys have been their big guys, and that's important. So, yeah, that's yeah. How I and I, and I think you make a good point about the, the team's character, um, able to overcome every everything that's been thrown in their direction. Well, if we track back to the series against Vancouver, that series was flipping almost every game. Right. And anytime Vancouver got a a shift of momentum their way, it seems like. Well, Edmonton could just erase it. They could go on spurts where McDavid, Dry Saddle, Zach Hyman, their top guys just play like their top guys and they're able to solve any any problem. And that did happen uh, midway through the series against against Dallas as well. Granted, you know, Dallas Dallas played a good series. Uh Jake Ottinger was very good. Um their deep at time. play at times. I think at, most of the, I, I think most of the time he was. Their decor. Miro Heiskinen, Chris Tanev, those guys played a shutdown role to the best they could have in that series. Um, it was a matter of just getting the goals from their top guys when Edmonton were able to get theirs, and I think Dallas weren't able to to match that on on their end. But this is still a, a, an Edmonton team right now that I feel like is peaking at the perfect time. Because if you're, you know, Stuart Skinner, like you said, past couple of games has been lights out, especially game six, only conceding a goal. They're outshot by by 25. They break an NHL record as to you know the least shots taken in in a uh, clinching game that they that a playoff team has won to advance to the next round. Um, so yeah, Edmonton is is the the team right now. If you look at their special teams, I know they started slow on special teams, but in the past two games, I believe their power play went four for five. Um, their penalty kill. Um, let me just pull up the number right here. I don't think their their penalty kill hasn't conceded in, in I think almost 20, 20 uh, power play attempts. attempts. Yeah, yeah. So their penalty kill is 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 really and their special teams in general. Like I'm like I'm saying, big asset for them. Their top guys are scoring. Um, we have maybe a situation if they win the if they win end up winning the cup where Stuart Skinner could be regarded as like a Corey Crawford was um, for Chicago years back. You know, an average yeah. goaltender who who got hot at the right time when his his team needed needed it. So they're very interesting. And then if I track back to Florida, well, Florida is just a team that has been great in the playoffs since the beginning. They really had their way with Tampa. Tampa had no answer for them. Um, yes, uh, they went to six against the Bruins, but you know, you'd be able to argue that um, you know the the Bruins weren't never looked like a team that could beat them in that series because face it, let's face it, the Bruins didn't have the firepower that they did. Um, and now, you know, I think the biggest test for them against the Rangers was to see, okay, well, Igor Shesterkin really shut the door against Carolina for the Rangers. So how is Bobrovsky going to, is going to match up with him here, um, and make some big saves. And I think Bobrovsky was really good in that series and Florida just showed that they had an extra gear that the Rangers didn't. Um, they're on a mission, right? It's very hard to do what they, they did. They lost, um, in the Stanley Cup final last year, but they didn't just lose. They lost in five games. Could be demoralizing for a group, but they came back and they were fantastic all year and they've been fantastic this playoffs. Um, if I were to put 
I'm going to get your, your guys' opinion in a second, but if I were to put a prediction on who do I think is going to win this series, um, you know, I'm rooting for Edmonton. Um, we mentioned this last video. We're uh, Canadian boys. We're, we're rooting for the Canadian team to win for the first time since, since 93. Uh, I think they have a lot of momentum in their favor, but I just have to give the edge to the Panthers because I think they are the true team of destiny. Um, making it back to the finals um, and trying to right the wrong this year, I think they just have a different mentality, and I don't think they could be they could be broken. Well, look, I think Gary Bettman's shitting his pants right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Um, they don't want a Canadian seeing, team to win. Seeing a Canadian team uh, in the finals, in like for the second time in three years, definitely not a fan of that. Uh, well, I am. We are. We're Canadians, but he's not. Um, I think the last time we saw like a very close gap in teams of making the playoffs was probably when it was back to back Edmonton, uh, Edmonton and Ottawa, if I'm mistaken, in 06, yeah. 07. Yeah. So, 07, yes. And then we didn't see a team make the finals, a Canadian team make the finals since uh, Vancouver. And then there was like a Montreal span where like there's just American finals. Yeah. And then after Montreal makes it, and now you see another Canadian team uh, three years later. So it's nice to see. But speaking of the Ducks and the Edmonton Oilers, Corey Perry, first player in history um, to play Stanley Cup final with five different uh, franchises. So, uh, you know. It's pretty impressive. Lost it's three good. times. It's good, but he only lost won three once. Times. He's no, won didn't lose, once didn't, no, didn't he lose four? No. Dallas, he, Montreal, Tampa. Yeah, oh, he, yeah, because yeah, the, the Oilers, up. yeah, okay, yes, yeah, because yeah, that's it. Yeah, the Oilers, I have people I are calling like it that. the Perry curse. Right. How can you really call it a curse if he's won one out of the four times? So, I mean, it's only that he's been kind of on a cold streak recently with the last three, uh, you know, final appearances that he didn't win the cup, but uh, you know, let's see if that curse is broken this time. Also, um, an interesting stat as well, um. The um, their power play, yeah, absolutely went through Dallas. Dallas is one of the top five teams at one point in the playoffs in terms of uh, in terms of like their overall play, special teams, and everything. Look how far they dropped after facing the Edmonton Oilers, and having a a penalty kill at ninety three point nine for a team that's quote unquote called offensively minded. That's really good. So this is a. This is probably the best Edmonton team we've seen since 2006, in my opinion, when the, the, they last made it to the finals. This team has it all. And Zach and I both mentioned that if the Edmonton Oilers were to beat the Dallas Stars, it's because they would get at least consistent to average goaltending from Stuart Skinner. And that's exactly what happened. He finally woke up. I think this is the most confident he's, he's been um, in his career with the Edmonton Oilers. And this is why they're making it to the finals because all they needed was average to consistent goaltending to give support to, you know, the Edmonton Oilers amazing core where they're so offensively dominant. Zach Hyman, uh, Dreisaitl, Bouchard, McDavid, where they could go the distance. And that that's exactly what happened this playoff um, run for the Edmonton Oilers. Yeah, Stuart Skinner was shaky. Picard came in, helped out for three games. But Stuart Skinner always came back better and better and better. He consistently improved when his team needed him to. So Ken Holland right now looks like a genius. It looks like it's finally going to pan out. And if it does pan out, kudos to him. And, uh, you know, the best player in the world, Connor McDavid. You know, he deserves that Stanley Cup. And I would say Leon Dreisaitl is second to him in the world. So, you know, you would always like to see the best players in a, in a particular sport come away with at least one trophy in their career. You know, a couple of years ago, we were rooting for um, uh, Ovi to win the Cup, and that came true. And, you know, we've seen Crosby win the Cup. We've seen McKinnon win the Cup. Now it's, Mc, it's McDavid and Dreisaitl's time, yeah. in my opinion. Well. I think there's that, and and I think the other thing too is you know we we talked about it before. You know Zach mentioned it about how Florida you know wants to right their wrongs, and and after last year, you know they want to come out stronger and potentially win the Stanley Cup and probably play better, and and they're destined for for it. But the other thing too is both teams have something to prove here, 
right? And I know that everyone says, oh, when you're in the Stanley Cup final, everyone has something to prove. But if you think about it, the Oilers have a lot to prove as well because for years, you know, people have criticized their rebuild. People have criticized them as a team in terms of, you know, how it's built and how they had no depth, right? Like how they have no goaltending, how they have no defense, how it's 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 a struggle for them to, to you know, build a, a core because they can't surround guys with McDavid. And now, you know, they finally put themselves in a position where they've gotten to Stanley Cup final and, you know, they're the first Canadian team potential. Well, they're, they're the first Canadian team in the last three years to make it. They're the first, you know, t- Western Canadian team to make it since 2011. So for, there's a lot of pressure there in that regard. But at the same time, you know, Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl... Well, a bunch of Canadians were considered a Western team. Yes, so. I know. But I'm saying, like, <laughs> like in Canada. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. <laughs> right? But, like, in, in general, like, even what was interesting, too, about this, and this is why I'm talking about, you know, both teams having something to prove. Edmonton, at the beginning of the season, when Connor McDavid was interviewed, he said this year was cup or bust and that there was nothing more for the Oilers to do other than to win the cup and that anything else but winning the Stanley Cup was a bust for them. And it just felt like, you know, Knobloch comes in, they go on that 16-game winning streak in December, you know, they become one of the hottest teams in the NHL. They become one of the best teams in the NHL. After a terrible just, start. Right, after a today. terrible start. They were, they were ranked 31st in the league yeah. 200 days ago. And, and I just, and I feel like ever since then, and just how well they've played, and Knobloch's gotten, it looks like, the best out of everybody. Like, it, I think that, like, Edmont, I think Edmonton's more destined to win than Florida. And I'm not... It's not to slate Florida. I think at the end of the day, Florida's a fantastic team. They're built amazingly. Like I think any team in the NHL would want to replicate what Florida's team looks like because they're a powerhouse and they're fantastic. But I just feel like when you've got a guy like Connor McDavid, and again, I'm not this isn't to criticize Oilers fans either, but I do kind of believe that this is cup or bust for the Oilers in the sense that I'm not sure if they're going to have another opportunity to do this. And again, people are going to say, oh, when people have McDavid, anything can happen. But I just feel like you've got this opportunity with the Oilers. It's probably McDavid's, not going to say the only chance, but it's probably going to be one of his only chances to win a cup. Well, I I think he's going to do it. I think the Oilers are going to somehow win this and it's going to be in seven games and it's going to be a fight till the end. But I think Connor McDavid's going to end up getting his cup and Canada's going to get their first cup since 93. That's, oh, that's nice. I think, oh, I think, I think we're going to have a very exciting series with these two teams. Yes. I think yes. both these teams have their own purpose in this one. Right. And I wanted to touch on Edmonton, like the sense of urgency to get this cup for, for McDavid and dry in two years time. Um, McDavid is a free agent. Yep. In a year's time, Dreisaitl, um is He's a free, free agent. agent. Yep. So, you know, in terms of making it work with the cap and surrounding them with the most talent possible, you know, the time is really now for this group. This group, the way it's built, the, the time is really now. They came, yeah. sh- they came short in the, the conference finals two years ago. Um, you know, they've had some playoff runs, and it's almost felt like, you know, They've been building this this group up and playing in meaningful games. You know, Ryan Nugent Hopkins was drafted as a as the first overall pick in 2011, but he didn't touch the playoffs until McDavid uh, was in the picture. And you know that is just that is just a, te- a a telling story about you know how the how did the organization had all of these you know top top recruits. You know, I I named Ryan Nugent Hopkins, but you have uh, 2012. You have Neil Yakupov. Um, there's so many I, I can name Taylor Hall, who's, who's no longer with the club. You know, they were, they were in a, a cycle where they were losing, getting rewarded, but never getting over the hump. And McDavid is the one who brought life back to this franchise. And now they're in a, and now they're in a position where he, and more specifically, where he could determine if this team is gonna, is gonna win, is gonna bring the cup back because it is, it's been 30, 34 years that they haven't won a cup. And, you know, granted, he's always going to be compared to, to, to the great Edmonton Oilers, you know, in terms of what he's done for the, for the club. Wayne Gretzky, Mark Messier, uh, you, know, you know, guys like that, Paul Coffey. Um, so I think 
it just means so much for Ed, for for Edmonton to get it done this year, and I think they're playing great. And I think there's a I think there's a there's a high chance that it that it could happen for them this year. But I just think, you know, Florida is is such a powerhouse, um, and they have the experience of losing in a final last year, right? Like they yeah. have they have the experience. I know, Luca, you're gonna disagree with me, but you know, they they played in the finals last year. They were banged up, like they. This year they're not banged up. They have a healthy roster going into this finals, and I think it's gonna it's gonna make all the difference for them. Well, I think I think every single team is banged up to a certain degree. We don't, it's only gonna come out once the yeah. finals are done, so we can't really see that they're oh, they're definitely healthier. I would say they have more reinforcements as well. There's players who elevated their game even more. A perfect example is Gustav Forsling, who's um, honestly. Fantastic. Probably the best, and I, and I think he's gonna get con smite votes. Best sure. waiver pickup ever, probably. Yeah, like <laughs> insanity. And you have, you know, Barkov. You know, like you mentioned before, uh, you said he shut down Tampa Bay, Florida, and sorry, Tampa Bay, Boston, and the Rangers. And he sh- not only did he shut them down, he shut down their best players. Kucherov yep. zero goals in that series. Second round, Pasternak one goal and Panarin. Zero goals, all versus Barkov. Every time they faced off against Barkov's line, he shut them down. So Barkov is a guy that could potentially shut down McDavid and Drysaddle. Will he be able to contain them as well as he did those other three stars? Maybe, maybe not. We'll see in this series. But well, he's shut down three stars in the three previous rounds. He could do it again. So he's a key factor in the series to look forward to. And in terms of like the Florida Panthers, they're so deep everywhere defensemen, forwards. You know, they were getting scoring from Bennett last series. Verhage was on a tear. Barkov was on a tear. Kachuk was getting points. Uh, Reinhardt was getting points. Gustav Forsling was continuing to do what he was doing. You know, like, but also I would like to give credit to the Edmonton Whalers where their depth stepped up, even though obviously their top six continued to carry. You know, getting Adam Henry back from injury really helped. But Connor Brown got a couple points in the series, finally showing his yeah. value. Finally stepped up a little bit. $4 million but, value. Yeah. Matthias Janmark stepped up as well. He was getting some points. Dylan Holloway has scored a fantastic goal as well. And um, Corey Perry was back into the lineup as well. And, you know, it was nice to see that uh, some other depth players were able to get some uh, some points and help them out. And, you know, like you said, like that 5-2 win changed everything. And right now they're high on momentum. And it's not only – momentum on their side it's fucking high end talent on this team that they have as well so we're just gonna see an amazing offensive and defensive matchup here because both these teams shown based off special units and also 5v5 play that these teams could play a very well structured defensive game and offensive game paul maurice I've never seen a coach so confident and laid back in my life in the playoffs based off his pressers. And you see with his team too, Matthew Kachuk, every time they eliminate a team, he's so relaxed. And he's like, I told you we're going we're, we're gonna to be uh, winning this series. I told you we're going to be back. Like he's, they're, they're yeah. so, it's not, it's not being cocky. It's about it's confidence. Being confident, confidence. Yeah. confidence in not only himself, but in his players and his team as a collective. And I love that about the Florida Panthers. So yeah. as much as it pains me to say this, I do believe it will be a, a seven-game series, which is the best type of fu- fucking finals you could possibly get. But I do f- think that Florida has the edge here. Like Zach said, they know what it takes to make it this far, especially when everyone was against them last year and they 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 you know they blew past expectations and they eliminated the best team. Um, in the regular season history, which was the Boston Bruins. And they made it to the finals, losing against Vegas in five, which, you know, they were pro- probably very disappointed to lose in, in only five games. So this year they have something to play for. And we've seen it in the season with the injuries that they had. That could have set them back. It didn't. We spoke about that in our, in our other matchup video between the Florida Panthers and the Rangers. And again, they're able, they're able, they're, they're able to prevail once again. And then the Edmonton Oilers, they shown that they could get through obstacles as well. They were 31st in the league. This is like the best team since the St. Louis Blues in terms of finish being a bottom team and coming back and making it to the Stanley Cup final and 
Maybe they they they, they match St. Louis' success and they win that Stanley Cup the same you know way they did. So you know, that would be interesting. You know what's funny about that? You mentioned the Blues. It's funny because they were last two. They fired their coach. They bring in, brought in Berube and they won the Cup. And now the Oilers were dead last at one point during the year, fired their coach, bring in Knobloch, and now they're in the final. So... It it maybe there is maybe there is something there to firing your coach mid season when you're last place and and turning it around. It doesn't happen for every team, but it does happen. But one thing I want to mention about the Oilers and one thing I want to mention about Florida is look, Florida is stacked from top to bottom, right? You look at their team, like forward core is fantastic. Their D core is probably the best in the league, um, if not one of the best. And uh, you know, in net they have Sergei Bobrovsky, who you know has been playing very very good hockey with the Oilers. You know, if you look at this team on paper, you're not overly impressed with their their squad. And that's not to take away, let's say, from how well they've played. It's just that from a from a personnel standpoint, you know, Corey Perry is your second line right winger. In an ideal world, that's probably not the best case scenario. Evander well, Kane's your it, third line right right yes, winger. Yes, well, they, Cor, the Corey Perry move was, I think, I think it was only in in game but, six, I believe, that he was well, on the but, second line. What I'm what I'm trying to say, the point that I'm trying to make is that they're not as deep in terms of like where they're where there's where Florida is than, than I think people expect. Like what I'm trying to say is Florida's a deep team, right? All four yeah. lines like can pretty much, you know, dominate. Whereas with Edmonton, it's kind of just like, you know, you've got McDavid, you've got Dry Sider, you've got Nuge, and we've been talking about this for years, right? About how they've never always been built the correct way. But what's impressed me is, like I said before, they've gotten the best out of their star players. One thing that's been very apparent in these playoffs is Darnell Nurse has played some really bad hockey. And the fact of the matter is, is that Evan Bouchard has taken probably the biggest step of his NHL career. This season was a career year for him by a long shot. He was one of the best defensemen in the league. He's the best defenseman right now in these playoffs. He's been lights out for the Oilers. And, you know, Matthias Ekholm is showing just exactly why the Oilers were supposed to get him. But what that does is it basically takes pressure away from Darnell Nurse. And it also kind of sort of doesn't make people talk about how bad Darnell Nurse has actually been. Because at the end of the day, the Oilers are doing this without Darnell Nurse at his best. And again, I know Darnell Nurse is not, you know, there's different opinions on him in terms of how good he is as a defenseman and, and whatever. But the guy gets paid $9.5 million a year, right? Like at some point, you know, you got to look at it from a perspective of this guy gets paid big money and he's not playing like a big player. And that's what's impressive about this whole Oilers run is the fact that even though, you know, they're winning and even though they're they're getting the, the wins and the points from their big guys, Darnell Nurse is nowhere to be found in the points section and he's nowhere to be found in the defensive end. And it just goes to show you how much everyone's elevated their game and how much, you know, Darnell Nurse hasn't necessarily been a factor and they're still in this position. I think one thing that Edmonton's going to need from in order to beat Florida is they're going to need a collective effort and they're going to, again, they're going to need their best players to be their best players. But if Darnell Nurse can elevate his game and if he can find his game in these playoffs and, and just, you know, turn into even a defenseman that can be not even below average, but average... I think they have a chance in this series, right? I think if if they if they don't get that from let's say a guy like Darnell Nurse and a guy like Evan Bouchard slows down a little bit, and you know Ekholm is given a lot more of the load, it might be a tougher series for the Oilers. So what I'm saying in this situation is that Florida is is you know built from top to bottom. They've got a deep team. They're they're not reliant on let's say one guy. Whereas the Oilers, you know, they're reliant on McDavid and Drysaddle for sure. But obviously, you know, they need their big players on defense like Bouchard, Nurse, and also Ekholm in order for them to be able to, to, to win this series against the Panthers. Now, like I said, Nurse hasn't been a factor, but they still need him to be a factor if they want a chance at this. Because as much as, you know, as much as Florida is a great team and as much as the Oilers are playing well, you know, at some point, like, it, it can only go so far. And if, and, you know, as much as they've played well, you know, Cody CC can't be your third best defenseman on the night. Like, that's just my opinion on it. So, well, yeah. the third best defenseman right now is Brett Kulak, which who finds himself in the finals for the second time in three years. So, <laughs> he definitely has. Oh, he's experience. a good. He's a, but yeah. what I'm saying is like, like he's playing. He's he's probably playing better than he should be. Is what I'm trying to say. Like, 
Yeah, well, Darnell Nurse is, is like what you're explaining is is the reason for that because Darnell Nurse, right. ideally, regardless, forget about his contract. Uh, with Ekholm and Bouchard there, you would at least expect him to be their third best defenseman and probably right. among the conversation for the best. Um, right. But what, and what he not. could do in this series is he could – everybody's watching. It's a Stanley Cup Finals. If he has a great series and they end up we'll – get regardless of winning or losing – if you want to redeem yourself and towards a, a, a fan base, this is the opportunity to do it. He could right. erase everything he did for the first three rounds. If he has a great series and they win the cup, that's another bonus on top of that. Then I think I I think that's great for them. But like, yeah. let's compare blue lines with Florida. I just I don't think um, they're com- they're comparable. I know. Look, Florida, yeah. they yeah. don't have the sexy names, right? But uh, Gustav Forsling has been absolutely incredible this playoffs he's arguably played better than montour and i think montour has been pretty good but forsling has been paired with Edblad, and that pairing has been told look shut down the other team's top top line and they've done exactly that you have a guy in ekman larson who's who is basically hated by by vancouver fans and look he's an offensive guy who's still who's who's still good at moving the puck and they play him in an isolated role and he does his job you have Dmitry Kulikov, who I thought last year, honestly, I thought watching him, I'm like, how is this guy still in the NHL? But I've watched him in these playoffs, and he's still at 33 years old, found a way to elevate his game. And you have Mikola, who has basically the responsibility of, of let's say, a Radko Gudis last year, who's the big physical presence. You have all these guys that are filling in these roles on their decor, and their decor has been so effective for them in these playoffs. And it's and it helps their offense in a big way because there, there are games where Florida don't – they could score four or five goals a game, but there are games where they don't have to do that because their decor could really shut things down, um, make it difficult for the opposition to, to generate chances. And, you know, they're, they're a team that – and they also have a decor that helps the offense so much because all of these defensemen help out and transition from defense to offense really well. Um, so, I like, my argument is that – you know, Florida is, is such a is such a complete team, and I think they have different ways that they could beat Edmonton. And let's say, sure. you know, going back to Stuart Skinner, let's say he doesn't have a great series and he has another round two like he did against Vancouver, then this this series could get ugly. It could get ugly fast faster than we think. And then you yeah. throw in a guy maybe like like Calvin uh Pickard and and he doesn't necessarily show the relief um like he did for for a short spell. In the two games that uh, the two the three games that he played, and it, it could get ugly for Edmonton. So I think you know Edmonton is great for for what they're doing right now, but I think they're not at the level of a team a team like Florida who could basically score whenever they want. They defend super well, and they have a guy in Bobrovsky that could that could steal a game if needed. Yeah. Yeah. So you know I totally agree with all your points. Like the Florida Panthers have a lesser chance to collapse in the finals and the Edmonton Oilers, like the Edmonton Oilers, like there's Stuart Skinner that yes, he's shown that he's consistent and I'm, I'm buying in now on, on Stuart Skinner, but there's always that possibility that, you know, he could regress and take a step back because he, he, you know, he's shown it a couple of times. There's a pattern where he plays very good hockey and he plays very poorly. He yeah. sits out, comes back, plays very good plays very poorly so like there's that reoccurring theme that happens with Stuart Skinner so he needs to like literally hold the fourth and be like you know what I need to play the most consistent hockey I possibly can because there's a chance I never get back here ever again especially with this Edmonton Oilers team so like he he cannot afford to you know replicate what happened in you know previous series and then also the the, the, the Donald Nurse thing is is pretty concerning as well. And there's a lot of uh, media attention surrounding that in the Dallas series. Um, so, you know, if he wants to redeem himself, like you guys said, he would have to step up. But also their depth needs to continue getting on the board. And I'm not saying, like, they have to score two or three goals. They have to exa- – they if they do exactly what they did versus the Dallas Stars, they could win the Stanley Cup. They just need to continue right. with that. Continue doing what worked – in their arguably, I would say their best series, which was the Dallas Stars versus the Edmonton Oilers series. Uh, I think yeah, their right. hardest opponent were versus the Vancouver Canucks. I think they yeah. gave them a run for their money. LA was easy, 
Yes, but Stuart Skinner was not playing great hockey, in my opinion. He, he was struggling. But in terms of a, the most complete performance in a series was versus the Dallas Stars. And that's when it mattered most because the Dallas Stars took down the Vegas Golden Knights, the Colorado Avalanche. So, you know, that's very key because you just took down a juggernaut. And if you could take out a juggernaut, you could take out another juggernaut in the Florida Panthers and win the Stanley Cup and win the whole thing and bring the Cup back to Canada. But yeah. they have there's there, there's there's a higher percentage that the Florida the, the Edmonton Oilers do have some of those question marks that do not continue to succeed in this round. Whereas the Florida Panthers haven't shown any sign of weakness. And I'd like to say one interesting stat that's, that's probably gonna kill the Buffalo Sabres fan base. But Kalik Poso is on this team. Sam Reinhardt, Brandon uh, Brand, uh, Brandon Montour. Um, Evan Rodriguez, uh, who's another one? Kulikov. Uh, Kulikov. All these guys are making it to the Stanley Cup Finals, and some of them for the second time. So, um, <laughs> imagine being a Buffalo Sabres fan, knowing that you had all these players on your team, and they could potentially be all Stanley Cup champions with the Florida Panthers. So, uh, that that's something that kind of sucks for the Buffalo uh, Sabres uh, organization and fan base. Shows that. You know, they had the pieces. They just couldn't put it together. And um, I would also say that one last point is that the, uh, you know, whatever happens at the end of the day, it just it's always a good thing to see Canada back in the finals. And, you know, I'm not one of those people that, oh, you know, like I, I'm a Montreal Canadiens fan, so I'm going to vote against like the Canadian team that makes the finals. Unless you're Toronto, that's a different story. But right. um, I'm really rooting for the, the Edmonton Oilers. But from day one, I said that the Florida Panthers were not making, not only making the finals, but they were winning the Stanley Cup. And I got to stick by that. And they've shown it every single round that even when they were tested, they came back and they made, and they made you pay for it. So, so we'll right. see two teams that struggled, had challenges in the past that have made it to the finals, overcame those challenges. And they both have uh, many things to play for. So I think this yeah. is going to be a great series. It's going to be a long series. It's not going to be short like the, like the previous years. And uh, also, one last thing, the President's Trophy curse continues to be a thing with the New York Rangers being eliminated. Uh, I, I don't know how many years consecutively, consecutively now a President's team has been eliminated from the playoffs and has failed to win a Stanley Cup. But I think it's like 15 years or something like that, but maybe even longer. But that's all I would like to say. Is there anything else you guys would like to say before we conclude today's episode? Nope. I think it's okay on my end. Perfect. Zach, anything? No, I just, I hope, um, I hope that after all of these years that we'll finally get to see a Canadian team hoist a cup. That would be just, you know, that would be fantastic because, you know, in this current format with 32 NHL teams with the two recent expansions, there's, there's a, it's a large, uh, it's a significant minority with seven Canadian teams. And if one could get it done in this modern era, um, it would be really nice. And for Connor McDavid and um, Leon Dreisaitl, I think they're more than deserving to to hoist the Stanley Cup at, at some point in their career. Yeah, we always want to see the most celebrated and best players uh, in a sport, you know, eventually get rewarded for their, their hard work. And uh, for the New York Ranger fans and Dallas Star fans, you'll have your time eventually, but... Uh, Unfortunately, this was not your year. But guys, uh, we'd like to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Oilers fans, what are you guys thinking? Uh, will, you, will you guys win this series? And how many games? Who will be your MVP? What needs to improve to win the Stanley Cup? And Florida Panthers, uh, same goes for you guys. Who do you think is going to be the MVP? Who needs to step up and be a little bit better? And do you think your team will win? And how many games will this series last? Make sure to like, subscribe to our channel if you haven't alright already. And we'll see you in the next episode of the Young Nets Podcast. Thank you so much, guys, for listening. And we can't wait to talk about the Stanley Cup champion once they come out victorious. We'll be making a video on that and doing an analysis on their journey from rounds, well, from regular season, from rounds one to the finals as well. Thank you so much, guys, for watching.